Hello, my name's Dan and welcome to my allotment here in Essex in the southeast of the UK. Today I'm going to be making a video telling you how to grow pumpkins. I'm going to be giving quite a lot of information in this video on how to grow pumpkins. Hopefully you'll find that useful. We're going to be harvesting these a little later on. So I'm going to pick up plenty of videos in the next few months and if you would like to hear about those please feel free to subscribe you can share this video with anyone you think may find it interesting or helpful and please feel free to like it if indeed you do like it when growing pumpkins the first thing is to be clear of what you're growing them for so for example these here i wanted to get some relatively large pumpkins not ginormous so they were more or less impossible to move but a good size for eating and maybe to make a lantern out of as well so all sorts of different varieties now these are variety pacific giant atlantic giant is also another large pumpkin hundred weight is another one another variety is called big max have a look about if you're looking for a smaller variety something like jack o lantern is good about this sort of size i've grown those in the past if I'd wanted to grow the biggest pumpkin possible, I'd have allowed the vine to just carry one fruit. That way it could put all of its nutrients and water into the one fruit, making it as big as possible. But uh, I wanted to intervene as little as possible and I didn't want to grow an enormous, ginormous fruit that uh, became unwieldy and probably untasty to eat as well. So I let it do what it wanted to do. It set two good sized ones, some smaller ones around the other side. And there were a few more earlier on, which the vine then aborted. But I've let it do what it wanted to do and it set two really good sized fruits which hopefully will taste great. So this pumpkin is being grown in this raised bed. So the raised bed is made of straw bales here. I think of this as like compost in waiting. They are a carbon source. They also help to hold the heat in the growing medium in the middle for nice warm roots which are particularly helpful for the plant earlier on in the growing season when the temperatures could be cooler. So the growing medium in question here is horse manure mixed with a little bit of wood chip. I would guess it's probably about 90% horse manure and 10% wood chip. It was like that when it arrived and it was about six or seven months old at the time. So when you are initially planting your pumpkin seeds, you want to plant them around late April time. In many ways, that's a good time. You need to be aware of your late last frost date. You need to be aware of the individual climate and conditions, etc. where you are. But roughly around here, that's a good time. I set them in pots of multi-purpose compost and a good way I like to raise them to get them to germinate is on an indoor window sill because if you plant them outside in a greenhouse or a polytunnel, you could be at risk of rodents eating the seed. Rodents love to eat kirkabit seeds, so things like pumpkins, marrows, courgettes, melons, cucumbers, etc, etc. So you want to be careful in those regards. I initially planted the seed on the 14th of April and then planted it out on the 15th of May. And it's done well ever since. Now, regarding watering, if you wanted to grow the biggest pumpkin possible, you could consider watering every day. But uh, I actually haven't watered these for quite a long time. I gave them a bit of water, maybe two or three times a week, maybe a bit less early on in their life when we had that period and we didn't have too much rain. But they had quite a bit of rain this year and the fact that the horse manure mixed with the wood chip is so moisture retentive. I didn't actually worry about watering at all. I've not watered them probably since about June time. So that's very good indeed. But if you are considering or wanting to grow the biggest one possible, make sure you give it plenty of water. Then it can swell. Use rainwater if possible, and hopefully the pumpkin will swell and you have a ginormous pumpkin which will make you very happy. You could consider mixing some chicken manure pellets into the growing medium. These are very rich in nitrogen, which could help the vine to grow and put out some lovely leaves for plenty of photosynthesis. So that's something you could consider. When the plant has set some fruit, you could then start feeding it with something like an organic liquid tomato feed, which is high in potassium, which is good for flowers and fruiting. So you could consider doing that. Now with regards to these, actually, I've not fed them once. They've literally just been in the horse manure, mixed with wood chips since the start, no additional feeding, and they've done very well. So the rule of good growing medium, so good compost, good soil, strong plant, strong fruit or veg, and then strong you, hopefully, rings very true here. Sometimes people can have issues of pollination on their pumpkin plants. So what you do is you identify male and female flowers. So quite often, 
the male flowers will develop before the female flowers. So what you do is you look for your female flowers, which will be a flower, normally yellow in color, and the female flower has a little fruitlet, if you will, behind the flower. What you do then is get a male flower, which will not have a fruitlet behind the flower, and you peel back the center of the male flower and rub that lovely pollen onto the center of the female flower, and that should hopefully help with pollination. You could also use a paintbrush to do this, but uh, the way I would do it, if I was going to do it, would be to take off the whole male flower and then rub it on the female flower to get plenty of pollen on there. But I did not make any effort at all to pollinate these, so the bees and pollinating insects must have done it for me, which is very nice. A good temperature to aim for with regard to growing pumpkins would be about 25 degrees C. So that's about 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Now it's very hard to achieve that as a constant temperature in a climate such as the UK. So pumpkins like squash plants don't like to go down below about 12 degrees C, which is about 54 degrees Fahrenheit. They also don't like to go above about 32 degrees C, which is about 90 degrees Fahrenheit, something like that. So if they go below 12, they can slow down their growth or even stop growing at all. And if they go above 32, once again, the same can ring true. So 25 degrees, 77 degrees Fahrenheit, a very good temperature to aim for. So if you're going to get relatively cold nights, and in particular, if you want to grow large pumpkins, you could consider covering your pumpkin at night to keep that warmth because pumpkins can grow a lot at night time during the night. So keep that pumpkin nice and warm with a sheet or a blanket and that should help keep the heat in there to allow that pumpkin to get nice and big. You can see I've removed some of the foliage around the pumpkin here. So I've done this so that the sun can hit the pumpkin and thus harden it off quicker to ripen it quicker. Now, if you're going for your large pumpkin and you feel that your pumpkins have more growth in them, you can actually leave the leaves on a little bit longer to stop the sun to a degree getting to the pumpkin or you could consider even covering it during the day and thus hopefully encourage the plant to not ripen the pumpkin yet and increase the size of the pumpkin. Now you could see that I'm growing this vine on a pile of horse manure mixed with the wood chip and what the vine proceeds to do is to actually layer into the ground that it's covering in certain places and you can see there look that's that's connected there so that's actually getting additional water and nutrients from this manure here which is very beneficial to the pumpkin because it can help it to get more nutrition so very good so you can leave it to do that so you could consider growing your vine over some manure or some compost to thus give it more food for hopefully a better pumpkin when growing your pumpkins you want to ideally not have them on a wet underneath. So you could consider putting something like straw underneath them or maybe even growing them on a pallet or something like that. So you could direct your vine onto a pallet or in the case of this, if I'd wished, I could have lifted this up <laughs> when it was smaller and uh, put some straw underneath. You don't want to allow the bottom of the pumpkin to, get, to be sitting in moisture because that can contribute to rot, which you really do not want. So you want to pick your pumpkins before the first frost. So if your pumpkins are still green, you could consider ripening them on an indoor windowsill. Of course, it wouldn't be practical for a pumpkin this size. So if this wasn't ripe or a bigger pumpkin wasn't ripe, something like a greenhouse would be good or a polytunnel, ideally somewhere where it's going to get plenty of sunshine and light. And then hopefully you can finish off the ripening of a pumpkin which has not quite ripened yet. So when growing pumpkins, you want to make sure that there's no objects that can damage it. So you can see here, look, this pallet here, the pumpkin's actually growing into it, has caused a little bit of damage to the pumpkin. I don't think the skin of it is broken, which is very good, but to make sure the area around the pumpkin doesn't have any obstacles, obstructions, etc., because a pumpkin could grow into it and it could cause damage. Now I'm going to harvest this pumpkin now. So you want to cut off the stem and you want to leave about five inches, something like that, four, five, 10, 12 centimeters. You don't want to allow any sort of germs or whatever's nasties to get into the actual pumpkin flesh itself. So I'm gonna cut this. This is an open all six, if I remember correctly, knife, which I use for grafting. So we're gonna cut this here. And when you do this, you've really gotta be careful 
that you don't cause, there we go, any damage to the stem, the pumpkin, and certainly not to your fingers. So we'll harvest this smaller, or get this smaller one up first. It's a nice pumpkin by the looks of it. Want to make sure you clean it. We'll get more into that at a later date. So actually, it's not, it's not actually too heavy. So there you go. This is the smaller one of the pumpkins. So that, that can go in there. Not so bad, to be honest. So we'll harvest this one now. This is the bigger of the two. Let's, uh, right. And he's off. Now let's lift him up. Shouldn't be too bad. Clean that off a bit. Yeah, not too bad. So anyway, here you go. There it is. That's a bigger pumpkin. Oh. There it is. The next step is to cure your pumpkin, which basically means to dry out to harden off the rind. So, the way I'm going to be doing this is putting it in my polytunnel for about 10 days. So you could harden it off at your allotment or in your garden, wherever it is you're growing it, but you want to protect it from rain, you want to protect it from things that might eat it, so maybe rodents, for example, or something, it has to be quite a big rodent to eat this pumpkin, but uh, you get the idea, so it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't damage it. And leave it there for about 10 days. So about 25 degrees C is ideal for this, which is around 77 degrees Fahrenheit. You may not be able to achieve exactly that, but that's the rough sort of temperature you want. And you want to store it on something like a pallet or some straw. You don't want it to be touching the ground. Plenty of good air circulation and sunshine, and it should cure your pumpkin lovely and hopefully help it to store longer if that's what you're going to do. You also want to make sure that you have your stalk here, your stem, whatever, fully dried before you store your pumpkin. So if you want to store your pumpkin, you want to store it at a temperature about 10 degrees C, which is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So a shed or a garage could be good for this. You want to make sure it's dry. You want to make sure that it's dark and you'll keep it in there. So if you're storing more than one, you want to make sure that they don't touch because uh, rot mold, etc., could spread. If you see one that's starting to rot, you want to get rid of it. You don't want to be letting it infect your other pumpkin. So how long will they store for? Well, how long is a piece of string? Of course, under ideal conditions, they will store longer. It could be variety dependent, weather dependent, because of course, 10 degrees C, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, we're still getting relatively warm day temperatures at the moment. So that could affect something. So there we are. But um, yeah, that's how you would store your pumpkins. So I hope you enjoyed that video on how to grow pumpkins. So you can see I've got some other goodies here. Now this here is Victor winter squash, a long keeping squash. I've grown it before, nice tasting, keeps for a long while and very much worth growing. It's an heirloom variety, interesting. And here, this is Trista White Cusa Courgette, very good courgette. The plants are very heavy cropping. You get a lot off of one plant. So look into that variety. And these, I can't remember what they are actually, but uh, either way, they look like a nice squash. There's one there and there's one there. So whoops, so there's plenty here, which is really nice. Anyway, I'm going to sign off now after I've done my little stacking here of vegetables. And if you enjoyed that video, thank you. Mm -hmm. found it useful whatever whatever please feel free to like it share it with anyone you think may be interested and if you would like to see any more of my videos please feel free to subscribe and there we are enjoy whatever it is you're doing as always thanks for your time see you whenever bye